So good morning. Um, this is <laughs> this is uh, just a little um, this is a little snippet of uh, a story uh, f for Saint Michael, <coughs> and it's from our um, newsletter that just went out uh, last week. Um, the Messenger. It's on page ten, and I just wanted to read this story to you. Um, this is this is Delphinium Sunday. Um, as you can see, the delphiniums are blooming, and I chose a spot to record this where the delphiniums are not laying on the ground. Um, but this was really a very special Sunday in the church. Um, it was a, it just changed so much of our um, environment there. Uh, it was a, certainly a group effort, and so I just wanted to um, uh, read this little story to you. So, The delphiniums in my garden are bent over this morning from the windstorm we had a few days ago. <coughs> and uh, they really are. They're in another little uh, um, garden <laughs> area, and they are um, bent over this morning and kind of laying on the ground. Many of them lay long on the ground with their heads curving up to the sun and will bloom from this position. They are blooming from this position right now. I did not stake them this year. I waited too long to get in there and properly tie them up. So the delphiniums are all uh, are pretty crowded. It's a big patch and uh, if you don't do it, really you need to do it at the very beginning of the season when they're <coughs> probably a foot tall. They need to have cages around them or stakes and then um, strings tying them up to support them as they grow. Once they uh, grow together, the, the limbs of them are so fragile that, that it, they just break and they're all tangled up and it's just really impossible to get there in there and do it properly. So I did not do it properly this year and uh, so i found that bracing them up doesn't matter all that much in the end because when they are blooming and become top heavy, even with bracing, one will topple in the wind, taking whoever is next to her with her and on it goes till they're all down. And there is no recovery other than to cut. Delphiniums bloom in July. So for many years, they are what have graced the altar at St. Michael and all angels on that day on those Sundays, actually. And so that first Sunday in bloom, we named Delphinium Sunday. It all began really about 20 years ago when Mary Sourman and I, Mary was the organist at St. Michael then, and I and Bruce painted the inside of the church. In those days, the walls of St. Michael were a dark brown wood grain photocopy on a kind of plasterboard that had never been washed and was covered with grime from the old oil furnace. It really was dark in there. The idea <coughs> of painting the walls came up and then exclamations of, no, we can't do that. It's always been this way. And then the call to just go ahead and do it because it really needed to be done. And if you refer to the, if you have the newsletter, you just go to page 10 and look at those two pictures there at the bottom. You have Mary standing on the ladder on top of the altar, which was up against the wall then. And then you see the back part where the, the back wall where St. Saint, win, Saint Michael window is. The top part is painted, but the inside of the church hasn't been yet. And you can see how dark it is. I decided on a color that looked like milk with a little coffee in it and bought a few gallons and Mary and Bruce and I set to work without telling anyone. It took two weeks to finish. Over the stairs so I could reach to the top, Bruce set up scaffolding he made from an old oak plank he had milled from an oak tree he had cut down back in Connecticut on his grandfather's property and brought with us when we moved here in 1984. Mary set up a ladder on top of the altar and climbed to the top of it to do her section. 
We finished painting from the back wall out to the center of the church the first week and finished to the front of the church the second week. Paint is the best changer of things. It is immediate. It is messy. It is easy. It is fun. And it is transformative. The church was transformed in 14 days. Those of you who were here then, I'm sure remember that first painted Sunday and the lightness of being that was a hint of what was ahead. The second Sunday was a teary one is Mary Lou and David, Edna and Bill, Jean and Joe, and many others came through the big red doors to behold their beloved church, brighter than it had ever been in its sacred old life, bright with hope, bright with new life, bright with fresh blue delphiniums on the altar.